This is Korean lilac. And this is really probably the smallest lilac that's commonly available in nurseries. And it makes a really good uh, shorter screen. It's, it's easy to, with a little pruning to keep it down to four or five feet or even a little shorter if that's what you're looking for. And although you'll notice the flowers are smaller than the common lilacs, there's many of them. And what I really like, now it's just starting to open here, I really like that contrast between the flowers that are fully open, the lighter color, and then the deeper color of the buds. And then you kind of have that just a beautiful kind of mosaic of different colors. It has real nice clean foliage. I've never seen mildew on this Korean lilac. So for a plant, this one definitely could be planted next to your deck or patio, or use as a lower screen to uh, you know, block, a, block a shorter, a lower view or something like that in your home landscape. Well, I have this uh, variety in, in my home, and I put it around my LP tank. That, that'd be a real good use for this plant. And there's probably other things like that. Maybe you want to grow it next to your compost pile or one side of your garage or something, just to soften an area in your landscape, block a low view. And it uh, certainly is fragrant. I'm, I'm enjoying this, just smelling it right here as we talk. <laughs> well, we wish our viewers could smell this today. That's right. Uh, does this one require any extra maintenance? Well, not too much. What I found is that I have this at home too. And I, every once in a while you get some of the individual branches that get real weak or sometimes they'll die completely. And so as soon as you spot those in the spring, it's a good idea just to go all the way back and prune them back to live wood take those out. And I even one year on mine, we had a really cold winter before we had any snow, and I got quite a bit of dieback on it. But what I did then the following, it didn't grow very well that next summer. The plants were still, you know, about half alive. But in that winter, then I cut it all the way back to the ground, just left about a stumps about three inches tall, and it came right back from the, from the, from the, the ground and made, now it's a beautiful shrub just like this again. How many years does it take to get back to that mature height? It takes about three years. And do we have blooms or a few blooms of maybe none the first year and then a couple more? That's or? right, just a few, yeah, that's exactly what, how it responded. But it, by, by the third year, it really was a better plant than it had been even before that cold winter. Okay. Well, it's, it, I like this light purple to it. Uh, you know, that's one unique thing about lilacs. We seem to have a nice color variation. Oh, we do. And there's everything from the, you know, from the deep purple to the light purple and the pinks. And then if, if we, we could look at some white lilacs, too. This is the Tinkerbell lilac. And unlike many of the other lilacs that were developed in Europe, this is really a, a homegrown plant. Neil Holland from Cheyenne Gardens in North Dakota developed the Tinkerbell. And I know one of the parents is Syringa microphylla, which is not a common lilac, but Neil crossed that. It looks to me like he crossed it with the Korean lilac, but he's certainly got a different color because he's got that nice rosy pink here instead of the purple. And it still has a nice attractive small leaves, uh, disease resistant plant, and another lilac that'll stay you know, small in your home landscape. Well, what are we, three feet high here? and that's about its mature height? It doesn't get much taller than that. It's, this has been here, I think, five or six years, so it's, uh, it's, it's a mature plant. We've got this beautiful little rosy pink, which is kind of an unusual color. Uh, we've got more standard colors, and I see uh, in our background here, we've got a nice light purple. And that's right. Uh, uh, Glory over here has got the biggest flowers, I think, of any lilac here in the Arboretum's lilac collection. That's just that night, really a light purple, but also really large, showy flowers. And then just around the corner from, from Glory is a, a hybrid called DeMille that has another, another one of those lilacs with the deep purple flowers, which are really, really showy. And then elsewhere here in the collection, I'm sure we can find a, you know, a really nice white flowering lilac. Are they fairly common, or is that a weaker plant? Why don't we see a more white? Oh, I, I don't know. I think a lot of people just associate, you know, li lilac color is kind of really means purple, I guess. They kind of associate lilac with purple, but, but there is a, you can buy just the common purple lilac or the common white lilac. It's really the same species. The white is a mutation that was discovered in a nursery, and then they propagated it by grafting or by dividing the plants and able to maintain that white color. And since then, the white's been used in a lot of hybrids as well. And how would you use that in the landscape? Was, would you mix it with the purples or kind of have it by itself? Uh, I've seen it both ways. You know, my, my, I guess my parents, when they started their house in Richfield, a suburb here in Minneapolis where there was nothing at all, it's just it had been vegetable fields. Uh, my, my, my grandpa said, you need one purple lilac and one white one, and that's all you need. Of course, he didn't know as much about lilacs as we do. <laughs> so, but it, they're, they're actually a nice contrast uh, to have them together, but it also looks great to have a grouping of all one color. So it's really personal preference. I see, I see. Well, as we were strolling through the uh, lilac yeah. collection here, uh, I came across the Preston lilac. 
not one that I'm familiar with. What's the background on that particular species? Well, the Preston lilacs are a group of hybrids that were developed in Canada, and they have some really unusual colors. There's several things that make them different. First of all, they bloom later. They're just starting to bloom today. And the, whereas many of the other lilacs are starting to be towards the end of their bloom period, and they've gotten the, some of them are red into the flower colors. There's a, a lot of them that are kind of reddish purple, but there's Miss Canada is, is considered to be the, the closest to a true red of any of the lilacs. They have a different leaf shape, kind of more of a football shape. I, I believe one of the parents is late lilac, which has that, of course, later bloom, as well as that different shaped leaf. But they, the, the unusual colors and that ability to extend the bloom period several more weeks into the late spring is really a nice feature in, for a lilac. So when you say late bloom, are we talking into mid-June before they are finished? They could be. Yeah, now this is uh, here in, uh, so we're having an early spring this year, but I've seen those plants bloom in Memorial Day and, and even into early June. There's probably more of the normal bloom period for them. I have a question. I really like kiwi. Can I grow them in Minnesota? Well, we can't quite grow the fuzzy brown ones that you're used to buying in the supermarket, perhaps. But there is a type that we can grow. And that's one of the things we're working on here on the University of Minnesota Horticultural Research Center. This is the so-called hardy kiwi fruit. Another name that you may have heard for it is the Arctic Beauty. It is scientifically called Actinidia, that's the genus, and then Colomicta, so Actinidia Colomicta. And there are several varieties, mostly with Russian names, and they're all quite cold hardy here, for the most part, at least in southern and western Minnesota. The fruit of the hardy kiwi fruit is a little bit different from that fuzzy brown one that you see in the supermarkets. This one is about the size of a grape, and it's kind of green like a grape and smooth like a grape. And you can actually pick these right off and pop them in your mouth, skin and all. They have a kind of a spicy, sweet flavor. It's a little bit different than the fuzzy brown kiwi fruits that you've seen. A very pleasant little flavor. Ask the Arboretum Experts has been brought to you by the Minnesota Landscape Arboretum in Chanhassen, dedicated to enriching lives through the appreciation and knowledge of plants. Well, Peter, this would be a great place for someone to uh, come and look at the varieties that you have here. Um, got a nice dark one there called Night, and here's a little light purple. Uh, there looks like one that was an early variety. Yeah, that's Essasepi. It's a strange name. That's one of the hyacinth flowered lilacs. And they're the first ones to bloom. Right. And so that's you really want, if you want to extend the bloom period, have a hyacinth flowered lilac, then one or two of the common lilac or the French hybrids, and then one of the late species, and you can have lilacs blooming for a long time. Oh, I see. Well, what's this one? Boy, this looks different. Very different. This really is. This is the cutleaf lilac. And this is a, a parent in some of the hybrids to get that kind of a light purple color, but it's really a very different plant. Here, when we're looking at these today, you can hardly see the foliage. It's just covered with flowers. And it's really got a different uh, texture. You know, my lilacs are generally kind of coarse, bold plants. Yes. And this has got a, almost like a bridal respirea, just kind of a graceful uh, uh, plant, uh, uh, form. And uh, if, if you look closely, you'll notice it's got a compound leaf when it's the only lilac that has that uh, you know, divided leaf. Kind of like an like a ash tree almost. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Yeah. Of course, uh, they are in the same plant family, lilacs and, and ash. Very, very unusual. Uh, you can hardly see that foliage on this one. That's right. And I, I don't think this one is quite as hardy. If you look here, you know, you'll see kind of dead branches scattered throughout here. And, you know, our grounds crew has got uh, tons of work here. And so they're not able to get everything pruned exactly when it should. Sure. But if you were at, if this, you only had a few lilacs at home, as soon as you notice that in the spring, you want to prune those dead branches out. And that, of course, then it won't just detract at all. And once those were missing, uh, the plant has still got just loaded with, uh, with healthy, healthy branches with lots and lots of flowers. Well, Peter, if I'm going to go out and purchase a set of lilacs, what characteristics should I be looking for? I think one of the most important things is how large the space is where you're planting the plant. Because we can see how big some of these hybrid lilacs get, the common uh, lilac hybrids and the late lilacs and things get really big. So that's a, certainly a factor. But also, it's, you know, if you come here during the bloom season, you can just pick out the color that you really like, you know, the, the different plant forms, the textures, and fragrance. You know, go ahead and, and bring a notebook along and smell each one as you go along and, and take notes of the ones that you really like. 
and then they might, some will be harder to find than others, but there are some specialty nurseries. Uh, uh, the best single resource is the Anderson Horticultural Library right here in the Snyder Building at the Landscape Arboretum. They have a collection of thousands of seed catalogs. It's also an online service, but you can either look at the, they can help you find sources for nearly any lilac here in our collection, or you can use an online uh, plant info .umn.edu and find the exactly lilac you're looking for. We talked about those characteristics that lilacs prefer. Let's just repeat that one more time. Uh, yep. We want a, what, alkaline soil? Uh, either uh, slightly alkaline is the very best for lilacs. They won't grow in a real acidic soil. So if there's wild blueberries and you're growing on your property or something like that, that's an indication that it's an acidic soil and they won't do well. So, so neutral to slightly alkaline is ideal. They definitely want full sun. You know, we're here and you can see the flowers around us and the, we're out here in full sun. And then you, you never want to plant lilacs in an area that's soggy, where, it's, where after your rain you walk through and your feet go squish, squish, squish. You want a well-drained site sunny, well-drained, and then big enough for the lilacs that you're, that you're selecting. And, don't, and of course, all lilacs aren't big. Remember the Korean lilac and the Tinkerbell, and, and there's some other, Miss Kim is another one that we haven't seen that, that is a real good performer that is very fragrant, that also starts to bloom about this time of year towards the, the end of the, of the main lilac blooming season. Well, that's uh, a nice assortment. And again, we cannot stress that people need to utilize this arboretum more often because it isn't only lilacs that you have here, but a lot of other sh trees and shrubs. I'm glad you hear you say that, Larry. I know you've been here many times, and the, right, that's right. That's what's really nice about whenever the lilacs are blooming, that's also going to be our tulip bloom, and flowering crab apples are in that time period. And now this year, the azaleas have started to bloom, and so that the azaleas and lilacs overlap towards the end of the lilac bloom season. And it, uh, of course, the woodland wildflowers. If it's just a spring in Minnesota, is pretty hard to beat. So exactly. whenever I go on trips, I, I always try to stay in Minnesota soda during the whole month of May and in the in the first couple of weeks in October because why would you want to be anywhere else? <laughs> exactly, exactly. Well one other plant you didn't mention that I think you've got a fairly large collection is the peony. Mary Meyer, the interim director, has got a peony bouquet on her desk today and so that's some of the earlier peonies but they're coming into their full bloom period now and uh, uh, but what, another plant that has been so much work been done over centuries and all these different flowers, the pinks and purples and whites and there's even some yellows now and then you can have both the double peonies and then some of the anemone style, kind of the Japanese peonies. That, so there's a, just as much uh, diversity in that group as there is in lilacs almost. Well, as uh, <laughs> many times that I've been out here, bring a picnic lunch and make a day of it. That's, there's plenty to see. We've got 1,137 acres, and so that uh, tra there's nature trails and uh, a three-mile drive. You can either walk or drive your car, and there's parking lots spaced along there, so you can visit different gardens. Uh, of course, it's uh, another month. The roses will be in full bloom, so that's also well worth coming during during the during the month of June. And then some of those new hybrid shrub roses are really being selected to bloom throughout the whole summer. And so if you have some lilacs in your garden and then some azaleas, and then some shrub roses, you can have flowers from April all the way into the fall. Be the perfect yard. <laughs> I think so. Yes. Well, thank you very much. I enjoyed the uh, discussion on lilacs today. Well, it was, I enjoyed it too, Larry. I'm glad you came out here to the Arboretum today. Funding for Prairie Yard and Garden is provided in part by the Minnesota Arts and Cultural Heritage Fund. Additional funding is provided by a generous gift from Irene Hansen, who shares your passion for gardening. Closed captioning is provided by Mark and Margaret Yackel Juline in honor of Shalom Hill Farm, a nonprofit rural education retreat center in a beautiful prairie setting near Wyndham in southwestern Minnesota. Shalomhill.org.